I'm Stephen McGarry. I'm a professor at BYU-Idaho in the Economics Department. I teach in the Agribusiness Program. Um, and we're here at uh, Ayakuma at the Golden Sunbeam School. When we first arrived at the, uh, at the Golden Sunbeam School, we found that Emmanuel Opari was trying to do agriculture projects to make the school self-sufficient. And so when we looked around, we saw that they were growing. They had uh, all sorts of vegetables that were growing. But the one part that they were missing would be the protein part and uh, the protein that would be added to the diet. And in Guatemala, a soy cow had been established to help provide for protein for the school kids that were attending the school and also a revenue stream and also taught them a business practice, how to be businessmen on their own. Uh, when we look at the nutritional benefits of soy, uh, soy has uh, about 50% more protein. It has the vitamin D and C associated with it. It has different nutrients, other nutrients that are valuable to building strong bodies, bones, uh, lowers blood pressure. It has all sorts of benefits associated with it. In addition, the soy cow itself is not an animal and it doesn't take a lot of care, it doesn't take tending. Uh, you don't have to feed it uh, other than feeding it the beans, the soybeans in to make the milk. Uh, and it, it can be done efficiently and, and economically. It really doesn't take a lot of resources. It takes the soybeans as the raw material, it takes electricity, and it takes uh, labor. Other than that, that's all it really takes. The soybeans are processed through a grinder, then they're put into a cooker. The cooker processes the milk, the milk comes out, we bottle the milk, and the bottling is capped. The bottles are set to cool uh, until they get room temperature, and then we put them in the freezer and deliver them the following day to the uh, school. Uh, we can do about 50 bottles per batch, 50 300 milliliter bottles per batch. Uh, it has the capacity, if it were run, to do about 15,000 bottles a, a month of, of soy milk. Um, and then we can make so yogurt with it and also tofu with it. In Burkina Faso, they would be able to market additional bottles of milk to different schools or different villages uh, even set up their own little kiosk or their own little roadside stand with bottles of soy milk uh, that they can then sell and increase their own revenues, their own earnings. The opportunity for the soy cow to expand is, is tremendous. Uh, this operation uh, has a value, cost value, a startup value of about uh, $10,000. And uh, so it, it is beneficial uh, if the, the soy cow is worldwide. There's a few of them around in most countries. By the year 2050, we're going to have over 9 billion people on the earth. And 75% of those people are going to be living in urban centers. The water requirements, demand for water is going to increase by 30 to 40%. But those people still need to be fed. We have to create food. We have to produce as much food in the next 40 years as we have done for the last 10,000 years. That's the point we are here in agribusiness about. We're here in, in the international opportunities, Ghana, Burkina Faso, to try to help provide food for the people. That's why we're doing it.